Hello there, it's Ed Gamble and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. We'll be chatting about episode 5 of series 10 of Taskmaster on Channel 4. Uh, I've been hosting all of them, I've really enjoyed them so far. Uh, This might be my favourite episode of the series. Uh, It's a brilliant one, all of the tasks are very funny. There is a task at the end that made me absolutely scream. I'll just say watermelon. You should know that already, though, because if you're listening to this podcast, you should have seen the episode already. Go away, go on to all four, watch the episode of Taskmaster before you listen to this episode of the Taskmaster podcast. There will be spoilers. There will be chat about what went on during the episode. Uh, it's so funny. I mean, obviously, if you're not, you get on watching Taskmaster when it goes out. You want to be there while it's happening. Nine o'clock Thursdays on Channel 4. But if you don't like swears or bums, I always say bums. There's not been a bum in it yet, really. Richard Herring's actually quite early on. We saw some of his bum. Uh, But no full bums. But if you don't want to see a full bum and you're worried that there might be one and you've got kids watching or you don't like swearing... Watch it on E4 on Sundays at 6pm. That's the family-friendly version. So I just kind of want to crack into this. I want to get talking about the episodes. There were some points controversies, some absolutely brilliant tasks, some uh, underwhelming prize tasks, as per usual. And our special guest this week to talk us through all of that is the wonderful James Acaster. Uh, James uh, is no stranger to the world of podcasts. We do one together called Off Menu. Uh, He loves Taskmaster. He was on Series 7. He's an extremely popular contestant uh, and he still watches the show to this day. Uh, So he's very across this series uh, and has some hot takes and searing opinions. Uh, So let's dive headlong into those. Don't forget Taskmaster 9pm Channel 4 or E4 6pm on Sundays. Uh, Watch it. Check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Taskmaster for extra content. Uh, Do all of that. We'll see you after this. Enjoy! Hello, James Acaster. Welcome to the talk. Oh, no, no, it's not that one. Welcome, it's... James Acaster. No, it's not that huh? one. We're doing huh? a different a different podcast this time. This is the Taskmaster podcast, uh, oh. where you are a special guest, James. You finally get to relax and just enjoy the experience. Oh, uh, thank you. Of talking about Taskmaster Series 10, Episode 5. Oh, thank you, Ed. What a nice surprise. Just kick back, relax. Yes. You're not working today. Woo-hoo. Um, what about now, you? Are you working? I'm, wor- I'm working my bee off. Wait, wait till oh. you see me at work at this one. Oh. Off menu, very chill experience for me, to be honest. It's just yes. a sort of little chat about food. I do that all day, every day anyway. This, I do notes. I do oh. prep. Oh, dear. Dearie me. Are you impressed? I am quite impressed. A different side to you I've never seen before. This little yeah. swat. Oh, with a little shiny apple for the teacher. Yes, I would bring a uh, teacher a little shiny apple. I guess Who's the your teacher in this scenario. I guess Greg or Alex. Actually, I'm going to say Alex is the teacher in this scenario. Really? Yeah, because he's like he's the one who gets told off on the show a lot. Mm. Um, but now w- the podcast is like below him in terms of in terms of sort of uh, sure. authority. So he mm-hmm. very much takes out his authority on us. Yes. So who's Greg then? Is he the headmaster or is he Ofsted? God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. Uh, wow. So wow. you're here because, of course, you were on Taskmaster Series yes. 7, weren't you, James? Uh, yes, And you're best here series. to lend your, your... The best series, according to you. Uh, Most people and, say it is. Yeah, I know, but those are the people who message you about it, aren't they? I, 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 no. I it don't is, get messaged. It uh, is... It is a very good series, but they very are all good. they are all equal, uh, apart mm. from nine, which is the best. Uh, no. You are here nine to chat worst. about series ten, though, which is an excellent series and episode five, potentially my favourite episode so far. But we, we will get into that. Do you have fond memories of your experience on Taskmaster? Yes, I have fond memories. I have ups and downs in my <laughs> mind from it. Um, you know. It was tricky being part of a team, a cast where, you know, if any of us had been on any of the other episodes, any of the the other series, I mean, we probably would have won. So Mm. it was difficult being part of a lineup where all of you would have won on any other series. Interesting. But now you're having to compete against each other. And I think that was the trickiest thing. That is an um, an interesting take on your series. 
especially given I think in the first episode you suggested that you were the stupidest lineup yet. That was an early remark that um, was proven to be wrong very quickly after that. Like, the more it progressed, the more it was clear that we were all champion of champions. It was kind of like a champion of champions series sure. without having to do the other series before that, you know. So t- take us through your your lineup then and then tell me why each of them would have been a champion on another series. Yes. Uh, uh, Kerry Godleman. She would have been a champion on any other series. She was a champion on our series, to be fair to Well, her. I agree with that. She was a champion of your series. Very, very good. There was the catchphrase, bish, bash, bosh, that Greg yes. gave her, because she was doing things real straightforward. Um, Jessica Knappett. Yeah. I think only lost by one point, you mm-hmm. see. Um, just really creative of all of her tasks. I agree. Uh, threw herself into everything. Threw herself off the stage at one point, onto the floor. And uh, I didn't see it. I was blindfolded at the time. Yeah. But I heard it. We're pa- I mean, we're paddling around, aren't we? Because I agree with those two. I thought they were both very good. I think they would have done very well on any other series. But yes, maybe, so, so maybe we should dive headlong into the, into the pool of feces that was the remaining three people. Well, Go I don't think it. the other three were a pool of feces. No, uh, Rod was quite good. Rod was quite good. Yes, yeah, so let's start with him. Rod Gilbert. <laughs> Uh, fantastic, you know, really utilised his uh, his friendship with Greg a lot of the time to like to give him a bit of leverage. That was smart. And also very funny really, as well, yeah. really made use of Alex all the time. Yeah, with, you very know, clever. Would, would like use that, like, you sprayed water up his bum at one point and yeah. stuff like that. Very good. Uh, and like really, you know, uh, he would really think about his tasks long and hard. Any other series. No one else would have thought that much about their tasks. I see, you know? I see. He would have defeated the people. Um, so now it's you and you and Phil left pl- placed bottom, I think. I guess you're second from last. Phil was last. Yes, Phil Wang was last. But again, in any other series, he would have won. And I explain, was second exp- from last. No, explain that. Well, Phil had a very nice outfit that everyone still talks about to this day okay. that he wore for all of yeah. the tasks. And... He was just on. He was was on Greg's bad side. I don't know what he did. Right. Maybe in a down the walk to the studio or something like that to upset Greg. Said, said something out of turn, but he was getting penalised left, right, and centre for stuff he didn't deserve. I and guess because of his outfit, to... we were we were getting penis eyes. And uh, oh, I, I see what you mean. I, I, I yes, yes. But uh, here uh, he had a catchphrase. He kept on saying that he he haggled for stuff. Uh, yeah. That's got to be worth some points. And just very good at thinking, you know, the way that Phil would think about tasks was he would just kind of try and think of a different task and kind of do that. And that yeah, was quite he was, clever. So I, lo- I love Phil to bits, but he was quite he was quite bad at a lot of the tasks. So immediately wow. he, would, he would, wouldn't have won any other series. He and interpreted you, them differently. Yeah, wrongly. James, how would you have won any other series? Tell me. Through being great. I, 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 for, on so many of my tasks, I did really well. And it was just unlucky that there was a bunch of other people in the same series as me who were also amazing. And we were right. all, like, so good. But, like, I was always, I'd always think, again, like, I had a different way of thinking about it. Mm. And I'd really throw myself into it. I used my knowledge of the show. I watched so many episodes of the show. Yeah. I really knew my way around the me house. Too, I won. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah, you won on your series, which was, let's face it, Dud Central. <laughs> Yours one was true, a bunch of people who very, would have lost. You had the opposite lineup to me. That's not true. We had some excellent. You would all be last place in any other series if you well, were on any Baddiel, other series. David Baddiel, yes, I believe he is yes. bottom of the average points across all ten series. Yeah. If you were on our series, Ed, you would have got bullied, and Phil would have beat you. Hmm. I, I mean, we, I hate to tell you, I hate to be. I'm the just, one to I'm just going to let you. I'm just going to let you say that because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. So I'm just going to have to let you get away with it now, James. So I won um, the first task. You, you won the first task. Well done. This was a task, and you got five points. Thank you. Um, on your series of, you say it was up and down for your series mm. of Taskmaster. Uh, what was the high point, and what was the crushing low? Well, the high point. And, I mean, you wouldn't know it because it was in a, one of the episodes around the middle, I think. But it was, for me, it was on my first day of filming. <laughs> <So> <laughs> one of my early tasks. But we had to do a portrait of the Taskmaster, and uh, which I think is always fun. That every episode mm-hmm. they kind of do a, a portrait of the Taskmaster. But our one, they kind of tricked us a little bit because they had an earlier task where we had to put 50 things in a bin as quick as possible. 
And then later on, those 50 things were given back to us. We had to make the portrait out of those things. And I had just put in 49 stones that I found in the driveway and, and a <laughs> ukulele. And so obviously I was very, when I went in the room and they were laying on the floor and they said, do a portrait of Greg. I thought, well, this is going to be awful. Yeah. And uh, then I thought midway through, I realised I could possibly uh, snap the, you know, break the ukulele up and use it in separate parts. And very luckily, every time I broke it off, it just looked like it, it was very apparent what co- part of his face it was every time. I'd break it off <laughs> and it would clearly be the arch of his eyebrow. Or, and even like you couldn't see it in the episode, cause, uh, but like I, I'd used some of the strings as his hair. And yeah. Greg's hair really does look like it's made of ukulele strings. Like, it looks exactly the same. And I was so, so happy with it. And I remember Alex telling me that one of the uh, team, uh, Taskmaster team, uh, had walked past it and looked at it later on and went, that's like actual art. And it was day, it, it was day one. And I thought, I'm going to win this. And I'll tell you why I remember it. It's because I think everyone who's been on Taskmaster has this, where you have somewhere you do really well. And, and you're really excited to get to those tasks because you know you did well on it. And if you don't win those tasks, it really feels like a bigger defeat than you're, yeah. than you're ready for. It's absolutely and, horrendous. Yeah. Um, uh, and I was like, I better win this one because otherwise, I don't know, it's going to be humiliating. I, I had that a couple of times, but also it's worth it for the other way around when mm. you beat the person who thought they were going to win. Yes, uh, because to see that look on someone else's face that they didn't win in one sure. where they thought they'd nailed it and you're the person who did it to them. Oh, that is sweet. Yes. I mean, again, though, with my series, there was one and poor Phil. Uh, yeah, he had one that he was like, I know I've done well on this. And uh, I don't think he even came second in it. <laughs> and I I thought I said to him, listen, man, on any other series, you'd have won that task. <laughs> even now, you say the word Taskmaster around Phil, he suddenly looks like someone's taken the air out of him. <laughs> the show really did beat him to a pulp. Uh, so what was your what was your lowest moment, James? Well, I mean, there's a few to choose from, I guess. Mm. Probably my lowest moment would have, probably would have to be the hulu in, um, you know, because it was so close to, it was so close to being my highest moment. <laughs> you know, I'd, uh, we, we had been told to uh, me and Phil and we didn't know that anyone else no one else had been given this task but we've been told to learn how to hula in time for the studio and to improve on our hula in attempts we'd done in the house and I'd got like three seconds in the house I took my hula hoop home and I thought no you know, you probably got to try and do this because otherwise you're just going to get in the studio and you'll do another three seconds and that'll be bad television so really learn how to do this James and I really was committed to it. I practiced it at home. I, I was on tour at the time and I would be hulering as the audience were walking in and then they would <laughs> wonder why. I got a lot of tweets after those shows being like, um, yeah, okay, fair enough show, but can I ask why you were hulering when we walked in? Such it, a lovely a lovely compliment from the audience yeah. as well that you had a fair <laughs> enough show. Fair enough show. Little question. <laughs> Why were you hulering when we walked in? Because we thought that was going to be a setup for what the show was about, and then you didn't mention it. And I was yeah. like, can't tell you why I'm hulering. But I was learning a hula, and I was dedicated to it. And I could, I, you know, my pre show walk in was anything from 30 to 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And by the end of that little tour, I was doing the whole thing. I was hulering for the full 45, I could do it for 45 minutes. And then it came to the studio, and it was me and Phil. And Phil had already told me before we did it, he he said, I haven't practiced this at all. (laughs) And I was like, right, well, Phil hasn't done it at all. And they blew the whistle and we both panicked. (laughs) And it just immediately fell. I don't think I even did three seconds. Just fell to the ground. And then I wanted to prove that I could do it. And I did it for ages. And I think the full video of it is on YouTube somewhere. And um, I only stopped because they told me to stop. And then I still didn't get the points because they had to take my first attempt. Because you did it so quickly the first time, it was almost it was. You may as well have just put on a big pair of trousers and let them drop. You didn't do. Yeah. You didn't hula it at all. Didn't hula it at all. I just went straight to the floor because I was in my head. I was just like, oh no! I really panicked. It was a real yeah. low moment, and it was a low moment. But great telly, I thought. Yes. Well, it, it, to be fair, you know, I I can look at it now and be like, that's the best outcome as a viewer. And yeah. just to finish off the story, do you want to tell everyone where that hula hoop is now? It's, uh, I'm looking at it right now. 
it's in my living room. I can see it, and I I hula every day in lockdown because uh, it's one of the few things I can do for exercise in my own home. So I hula all the time still, thanks to Taskmaster. Now, from uh, the round hula hoop to the pointiest thing, that's this week's Mm. prize task, is the pointiest thing. Uh, I remember you being pretty good at prize tasks. I think I think you had some decent decent prize tasks. Yeah. And let me say, right, first of all, I love this cast. I love this series. They suck at the prize tasks. It has not gone unnoticed by anyone. They are... I mean, the fact they're all consistently bad, I think, is hilarious. That's that's yeah. what's funny about it. Sure. But they are the worst cast ever for prize tasks, I think. It's like, yeah. and I know Richard Herring has seen every episode of Taskmaster. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure the others have at least seen one episode. It's like they've never seen the show and they don't know what the prize tasks are supposed to be. They don't even try. And they don't even try and defend it. When it gets pointed out that it's rubbish, all of them sit there and go, yeah, pretty rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Come on, guys. Because you really need to think of something inventive. I spent ages thinking yeah. of mine. You had, uh, uh, I believe, an, a cutout of MC Hammer was your first one, I think, which was great. My first great, one, great and that way was to start. Things You'd Like to Touch. MC Hammer. Yeah, great. Very, very, very good. Uh, one that really sticks in the memory of yours uh, was uh, Gandhi's Glasses, Yeah. where you claim to have got Mahatma Gandhi's actual glasses. Yes, that was for Best Thing Beginning with G. Well, yeah, I think Gandhi's glasses was great. And, I mean, all joking aside about you winning any other series, I think you would have won every prize task on this series so far. Yep, with Gandhi's glasses. I could have brought Gandhi's glasses in for every single one of them. And I think I would have actually committed to the argument every time. They don't even try and argue. Apart from, there was one person on this prize task who was very unlucky, who I think did think outside the box, and I think is getting unfairly penalised throughout the series. Is it Moan? Yes, I think Moan is occasionally unfairly penalised, um, but I enjoy it because Moan's face when he is all excited about something, uh, that he's done something clever, and then Greg says, I don't like it. His disappointed face is my favourite thing. Yeah, it's a funny face, uh, very expressive, but I think bringing in uh, a book that makes a lo- that has, it's called something about getting your point across. Yeah. So it's about points, a book that's about getting points across. It's a different w- version of points. I think that's good, and I yeah. can't believe he came last. Yeah, that I think that was very unfair. It was. I, I feel like I feel like he should have come closer towards the top. Also, yeah. but I feel like occasionally he doesn't throw himself into his own arguments enough. Like you said, so he had that mm. pointy thing. And he was. He went. It's really clever. Uh, I've thought about this. It's really good. And then in the same sentence, with no one else saying anything, he went, "I don't really know what it means." Yeah. And I don't know about this anymore. And he just started to look crestfallen within his own monologue, <laughs> which doesn't help. You need to look confident, and then you can bring yeah. Greg along with you. Yeah, you need to argue your prize tasks against Greg Davis, and that's what I did. And you know, I don't know how many prize tasks I won, but I always came out with them with my dignity intact. Yeah. <laughs> it, it seems they're just an old pair of glasses and a lot of bullshit. Daisy, I don't think can bring in a good prize size because it will ruin the joke. Sure, yeah. Hers are so bad. This was a kebab skewer or something this, this week. <laughs> um, awful. Um, I feel I don't think Richard should have won. I think that was a classic three-pointer. Yep. I think Richard should have been straight down the middle, three points. He didn't even know the name of Pinhead. He just said he brought a mask yep. of the guy from Hellraiser and that he wears it in bed with his wife. He oh. absolutely should not have won that. And I know That's he listens no to this. So, yeah, Richard, you shouldn't Richard, have won that. There's a point where Greg did a quote from Hellraiser <laughs> and Richard didn't have a clue what he was on about. <laughs> Catherine, four points for the Venetian mask. We've not even mentioned the Venetian mask. That's, again, Mm. there's only one point on that. It doesn't seem pointy. And I I just don't, again, I I can't see how that's coming in second when Moan bought that book in. I mean, that's such a good book. And also, I'm bored bored of the masks, man. It's not best mask. Why are the masks at the top? True. I think think Greg was just like, oh, I like that mask. And now I'm going to group the masks together. He's, he's, He's lazy. (laughs) 
Uh, Johnny's meat thermometer, uh, three points. That seems fair. It's, uh, mm. you know, not terrible. Not great. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. The, to be side it. by side with, with the, with the yeah. skewer. Yeah, the skewer, I mean, that should have been bottom, I think. Yes. Uh, but, uh, and Daisy would not have had any recourse to argument about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Moan was bottom. And it just depends what mood you get Greg in. Uh, sometimes he likes clever and sometimes he thinks clever should be penalised. I'm fine with the, with the scoring of the rest of them in that order. Yeah. But just move Moan up yeah. to the top place. Uh, so let's crack up with the first task proper. Don't you want to know what I would have brought in? Oh, of course I do. I'm so sorry, James. James, what would you have brought in for the pointiest thing? Five points. Right. Now. How would, you, point- how would you have represented that? Well. I can't have the five points unless he gives me the five points. So I would say mine is five points. And right. then I'll and play I'll Greg say, and I'll play Greg in this scenario. Yes. Right, so you've brought in five points, have you? I have, Greg. The pointiest thing, especially in a round as this, we're all playing for points, and the pointiest it gets in the price task is five points. So I've brought in five points, which is the pointiest thing. Within right. this round. But you, you've not brought them in, though, because you don't have them yet. But that's because you're going to give them to me because I'm going to win. But I wouldn't give them to you because then you, you I'm not going to give you points for not bringing something in from the prize task. You've not brought anything in for the prize task, so you get naught points. You're disqualified. No, I've got the five points because I've have won them. the task. I've, I've, you're asking me to give them to you. You've turned up with nothing and then asked me to give you something. So you get nothing for not partaking in the prize task this week. Well, uh, well that's not no, because I've bought five points here. I just t- explained it. To, uh, no, but you've I, not. If you well, if you've brought five points in, then I don't need to give you any points because you've already got five points. Therefore, another task. What task? Uh the the holes one. <laughs> right. I think that's that dealt with, isn't it? Let's mm. move on to task one, which is bag the heaviest thing from the furthest distance through yeah. one of those Christmas tree machines. Now, I mean, I think it's a lot of people's fantasies to go through one of those, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, every now and again, the difficult thing about watching Taskmaster after you've been on it is you just go, oh, I wish they'd done that on my yeah. series. I would have loved it. Yeah, and 100%. definitely a Christmas tree, anything involving that Christmas tree bagging machine, Yeah, I would have loved I almost, to the extent that, of course, you want to put yourself through it, I almost mm. did, don't trust anyone who didn't do that on this task. The fact mm-hmm. that uh, Richard and Mawan and uh, I think Daisy, Daisy didn't put themselves through it, I think, are they robots? Why aren't they? <laughs> why isn't that your first thing you do and absolutely do that? Yeah. Would you I have mean, done that? No, I know what I would have done. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah, let's tackle this now. What would you have done? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Ed, but the points you get is from f- distance away from the machine multiplied yeah. by the weight yes. of what you're putting in, yes. right? I'd have fired a cannon into it. Right. So I would have gone far back with the cannon, hmm. aimed it really well, hmm. fired the cannonball, Mm. And it would have gone through. Cannibals are really heavy. You can mm. get really far and really accurate. And then that would have easily won it. Now, when you say, well, there's a few things to chat about, aren't there? So you would have got a cannon. How would you have got a cannon? I've made some phone calls. When I was on it, I got Richard Osman for one of the tasks. Yeah, but Richard Osman is a man who exists. He's not a cannon. Cannons exist. You don't have a cannon's phone number. I can find a cannon's phone number. I mean, Richard Osman is a man who can, like, you know, say no and run away. A cannon is an object that you can just make do whatever you like. Yeah, but the person who has the cannon can say no, can't they? The production crew can say no, we're not buying you an ancient military weapon to fire a cannon through. A I don't know if they'd say no to it. You know, I think they, they, they'd see the, the opportunity for good television there. And also, I, could get... I don't think you can aim a cannon. You can they're aim not, a cannon. They're not classically uh, like pinpoint accurate weapons, I don't think. I think so. 
That's what they're for, right? They're not missing all the time, are they? Yeah, but they, they're hitting like they're you're aiming them at ships or you're aiming them at an army. It doesn't really matter if they don't hit like a, a particular square meter. They're causing damage. What mm. you would have done is you would have tried to fire a cannon from outside the gates. Yes. It wouldn't have gone very far, and the cannonball would have rolled down, rolled down the little slope, mm. and you would have really hurt yourself, I'd imagine. It's possible I would have hurt myself. I mean. I think that's yeah, that that's probably inevitable, and and I'd, I've already written that off that I'm going to hurt myself during mm-hmm. that. But um, I mean, there is a chance I'd miss the Christmas tree banging machine and hit the house. Just a small but, chance. Yeah, but also, you know, if that happens, what a you know, that's an exciting turn of events for the show, right? No, they don't like that. Um, on uh, my series, I had to do a thing uh, with the last task of the whole series, actually, where. Uh, I had to knock over some bowling pins with a bowling ball and I mm. kept rolling it so hard that it was slamming into the side of the house and like <laughs> basically knocked a brick out from the foundations. Oh, and they no. don't they don't like it because they they've got like to do it. other stuff with the house. They've got other series planned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. So you would have done the cannon, sure. Yes. No one else no one else went with the cannon. I don't think mm. it was ever properly decided the distance travelled thing, whether it needed to be one movement or not, because that ten- that came in quite late in the conversation in the mm-hmm. studio. But because mm-hmm. my first thought was just go as far away as you can and sprint top speed and then yep. dive through it. Uh huh. That's what I would have done. I would have gone across the road. I would have run straight towards it and jumped in. But mm-hmm. they seem to be saying towards the end that the distance travelled was like one movement, which is why yes. Catherine did fine because she was in a wheelbarrow. But wow. Johnny got penalised. I'm not sure about Catherine's one. Are you not? Why? They showed Alex wheeling her all the way down the hill. Yeah. All the way up to the thing. And then she starts to look nervous and goes, oh, yeah. oh no, no, I'm not sure. And like that. And then it cuts <laughs> to a different <laughs> shot where her position in the wheelbarrow is completely different. Yeah. So she's gone from being on her back with her legs forward to being on her front with her head forward. Well, she and Alex just turned herself round. How how is she doing that without her legs touching the floor? So you're not you think there was some you've got a conspiracy theory about Catherine's. So you don't Listen, think Catherine, if I'm think- filming that and Catherine Parkinson has got to get herself from lying on her back in a wheelbarrow up on all fours, that's funny. <laughs> I think everything Catherine does is funny. Yes. We, she's just got her whole personality is just uh, so timid, but also so repressed. Um, yep. When I watched the show with my girlfriend, my girlfriend's now got a catchphrase because Catherine's just like a nice posh mum um, <laughs> with everything she does. Every time she does anything, uh, my girlfriend will go, "Oh, mummy." <laughs> she is quite and that was to your girlfriend's mum. That was a brilliant "Oh, mummy" moment. Yes, where yes. she was just so timidly, she came down so slowly in that wheelbarrow, and yeah. then just edged her way through the Christmas tree machine. Go, oh, uh, trying, yep, yeah, okay. Cute. She yeah. almost said, "Excuse me" to the Christmas tree machine. <laughs> they started laughing, and once she'd gone through the other end, yeah. that was funny. Had a complete <laughs> realization of what she was doing and where her life was, and <laughs> couldn't stop laughing about it. Whereas everyone else is a little bit more aggressive. Richard, like every task he's done so far, it's just. He gets it done, but he's also a mess while he does it. So, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I now see him as a like a Hermes delivery driver who's had a, had a breakdown. Just the yes, way he sort of funny. chucks chucks things in. He was chucking that in. His hair was everywhere. It was like he's divorced and yep. <laughs> trying to prove himself to his estranged children. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I thought Richard was going to be a lot more wily. I thought mm. he was going to be the one trying to find loopholes. And, I think and he stuff thinks like he's that. wily, right? Do you think he thinks he's wily? I think maybe? he thinks he's wily, but he really he looks hungover the whole yeah. time. He looks hungover, <laughs> and just might be. De- <laughs> more, he looks more like Johnny Vegas doing the task than Johnny Vegas does. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Actually, <laughs> Johnny Vegas is is, is, is uh, taking it a lot more seriously. He seems like he's really got himself together. Yeah, uh, yeah, heaven's a mess. <laughs> like Vegas is obviously you know chaotic but it seems a lot more controlled and measured now and he laughs a lot more than he mm-hmm. used to when he's in his persona yes, so now yeah. he's sort of desperate but he'll do a cheeky little smile afterwards whereas Richard is just chucking everything he has but he doesn't yeah. have much he's got that, that front bit of hair he's got going yeah, absolutely the, mad in front of that's you know, that it isn't it it's the front bit down. of hair flopping around everywhere yeah. as he huffs and puffs to try and get a horn case full of rocks 
<laughs> through a Christmas tree machine. <laughs> yeah. And Johnny was quite unlucky in this task, I thought, for only getting one point uh, for putting... He went and got a man from the street. That was pretty impressive. It was, yeah, it's not easy to, to convince someone who's on their way to work, of all things, to you know hold themselves up and put themselves through a Christmas tree wrapping machine. Please, please, please come here. Would you do me a massive favour? I've got to win a task. Would you let me wrap you like a Christmas tree? Please. I've got to be at work at 12. No, you'll be there by 12. It'll take one minute. So at the end of the first uh, task, uh, Catherine uh, won by putting herself through. Mm -hmm. uh, 47 million, uh, that's the five points for Catherine. Love that Mawan for a second thought that you got that he was going to get 2.63 million points. <laughs> yeah, you um, but ver it. Very lucky that that's not how it worked because yeah. he would be so far behind if that was the case. <laughs> and Catherine would have had an unassailable lead. Yeah, uh, She got 47 million points. Uh, <laughs> um, Richard came second with his horn case full of pebbles. Uh, Mawan came third with the rice rocket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Actually, do you know what? I'm contesting Catherine again. Go on. So one is that I don't think I think she got out the wheelbarrow and, and plopped herself in. But also, she lied about her weight and they went along with it. This is I was going to come to this. I I can't believe Greg went along with that. <laughs> I think it must have nearly been dinner or something, and he wanted to get on with it because you can't you can't say yeah, Catherine. Fine, we believe you. You're 22 stone. <laughs> was it an awkward situation of going? They didn't want to weigh Catherine on the day. Well, maybe, was it because Alex but... was too embarrassed to ask a lady to weigh herself? Maybe, but then in that case, if I'm if I'm Greg again, and that's where the buck stops, right? Yeah. If I'm Greg, and I'm going, well, you're clearly not twenty two stone, uh, so I'm just going to halve that. If you, if you if you don't tell us your real weight, I'm yeah. just going to halve it and say you're eleven stone. And yeah. there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just because I know you're not twenty two stone. Yeah. Do something like that, Greg. Don't go, oh yeah, I'll believe that you're twenty two stone, and then you win the task. <laughs> but then sometimes you just either you just let people have it. Forty seven million points is really funny. <laughs> and also so imagining that she's twenty two stone. Yeah, well as long, as long as that comes up more often throughout the series that they talk about her being twenty two stone, fair enough. But I do agree, I think some people are gonna be very angry about that, that she was she was allowed. I think uh, I know why, she, why, why he was so nice to her this episode actually. Go on. Because I watched one of the outtakes from the previous episode where she does a fart. Yes, that uh, that was an outtake that came out uh, last week. <laughs> um, where yeah, she does a little fart when she saw the chickens in the saw the chickens house. and she does a fart and I think Greg felt bad about uh showing the footage yeah. of her doing the fart and so he was very generous to her on the first task this, this week. Well, no wonder she did a fart if she's carrying around 22 stone in such a small body. <laughs> yeah. Must she just must be, be farting all the, all the muscle and fat must just be pressing down <laughs> on her bowels. Yeah, I imagine so. So, task, uh, task two of this episode. Uh, it's the old classic, paint a picture of a wolf on a rotating teapot and name 20 US states to slow the wheel down. This would have panicked me a huge amount because it was because it was an art task. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not confident of my art skills for good oh. reason, so I would have I would have really panicked when that was that was announced. Uh, and then also, the having to name twenty US states under pressure uh, would have really thrown me. Um, I think you could have done this. You, you've done a lot of traveling around America. I think you would have done the states okay. But but yeah, I could but I could do the states like now probably. Yeah. But not while painting on a teapot while someone's filming me and knowing that the quicker I did them, the more it would help. I think that's what that's what screws people. Catherine didn't attempt any. She was just like, no, nope, not doing it. Just went straight for the, the painting, which is, you know, fair enough, but you hate to see it. You, you hate you, to see it. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. You like to see one person do it. That's the thing about sure. Taskmaster. You want to see the different approaches. Yes. And the fact it was Catherine and the fact by the end it was just spinning around so fast and yes. her painting was a complete mess. I liked her not getting any of Alex's clues. Every time yeah, he said to her, this is a like New Jersey, she was trip. like, yeah, it's very nice, Alex. Yeah, nice, yeah. Moan having an absolute nightmare. He, he picked exclusively cities for most of the American states and couldn't yes. believe it when he was told they weren't states. <laughs> yeah, Philadelphia. L.A.? Yeah, that's one. L.A. That's one. So confident, <laughs> and then so, stopping, stopping Alex he helping him as well. So Alex, <laughs> yeah, telling telling Alex to stop talking because he was trying to put him off. Just yeah. great. But he eventually found the clues, though. Yeah, he did. Yeah. That was my one thing that I really wish, 
Like, because after having watched so much of the show and then being on it, I so, so wanted to discover a clue. Yeah. Like, when there's that series where they've got to uh, make a bridge with the stuff that's on the table. Yeah. And then all the clues are there to help them get all the equipment that's underneath the table. And you go, oh, I would have loved to have been like the person who just figures that out and actually it's does so it. It's so hard, though, because uh, then when you get that in your head, you're looking for clues in every task you do. Yeah. Um, so points uh, at the end of that. Uh, we had Richard winning another five points because he names the 20 states because he's a big Oxford show off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, did, I mean, none of the paintings were good, let's be honest. Mine would have been good. Yeah, I know yours. I'm taking that across the board, James, that you think you would have won every task on this episode. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Daisy named 18 states and got five points as well. Uh, Uh And then we have three points for Johnny, two points for Moan, and one point for Catherine. She named zero states and did a terrible painting. Next task, a little homework task. Do something out of character with twenty pounds straight away. James Acaster, what are you doing? Well, oh, it's quite difficult. There's a there's a lot of things that because um, I thought some of their ones were really good, and uh, Greg mm-hmm. wasn't convinced. So I think you'd, I mean, you'd have to go really out of your comfort zone and do something. You'd, I've never done drugs. Like Catherine suggested, drugs. Poopers. I've never ever done drugs, so that would be unarguably out of character, but then I would have done drugs. And I don't really want to do that at the minute. I think it'd be pretty scary. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to donate to like Trump's campaign or something. Yeah, that's true. You would have got in trouble, I reckon, if you'd done that. But we, out know, of character, for sure. Very out of character, I like to think. Um, you know, I could go the... If we're looking at like our friendship, Ed, and our professional mm. relationship... I could have spent it all on cheese and biscuits. Yeah, that's true. And eaten a lot of cheese and biscuits, like cheese boards. I hate cheese boards. I could have that eaten would have those. Had, that would have had less impact than take, taking drugs or donating to Trump's campaign, though. Because you want to go big with these ones, right? Because then you can, can just go, well, you've just eaten some food. I'm sure you've eaten that before. I'm like, oh, no. So, yeah, I think I'd have to do something that uh, I would regret. The thing is, the thing is Josh Widdicombe has spoiled a lot of things by getting that tattoo in series one because the biggest impact would be a tattoo and that would be out of character for you. It would actually. And do you know what? I could get a t- I would get a tattoo of Josh getting his tattoo of Greg on his foot. <laughs> so I'd have it. I'd have a tattoo, maybe on my back, a full back tat of for Josh Whittacombe. Yep, of Josh Whittacombe <laughs> having his foot tattooed with Greg on it. And let me tell you, if you want a full back piece for £20, that is not going to be recognisable <laughs> as what you want it to be. That is no. going to be an absolute mess. <laughs> yeah, it will look awful. You could have got a piercing, I suppose. You could have got an eyebrow piercing. Sure. I don't, uh, I haven't got any piercings, so I could have got, I mean, where would I get one that would mean, the? I mean, a nipple piercing I think would be funny. That would be really funny. Yeah. Nipple piercing. And you could get that for 20 quid, I'm sure. Sure. Probably yeah, that would be great yeah. if I'd whipped that out and been like, there you go, Greg, how's that? <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's crack on and uh, and speak about what they did. Because like you say, I think they, I think everyone did pretty well on this. I think there were no one pointers, which I think mm-hmm. speaks to that. Um, Daisy got a subscription to portable restroom operators. Um, which is out of character for most people apart from portable restroom operators, right? Yes. I mean, um, yes, it is out of character, I suppose. I mean, getting a subscription to a magazine. Yeah. I'm sure she's had done that before. Uh, okay, so you're you're suggesting that the act itself is the magazine subscription rather than well, the subject but also matter the of the content. magazine. Like, Daisy talks about a lot of grot on the show. She got... Yeah. She got a, a potty mouth, and she so does, therefore, which, which we're going to hear more from later. Yeah. So therefore, you know, if someone said, "Guess what, Daisy May Cooper's got a magazine subscription to," and it was, you know, shit. Poor I do. would still be surprised just because someone swears a lot. I'm not assuming they read magazines about feces. Don't think it's that out of character. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> Johnny had, I mean, this is probably my favourite. Johnny had his uh, yeah. 
his chest waxed uh, with a TM shape and also his armpits on top for no reason. I mean, that is, yes, out of character and shows a true commitment to the show. I can't remember if he won this task or not. He definitely deserved to. Daisy won. Kind of... Daisy, Daisy and Mawan came joint first uh, and Johnny got four points, which must be a kick in the knackers when you have your chest waxed. That level yeah. of pain. I He's not the first person to have their chest waxed for Taskmaster. I gave away my chest to be waxed as the smoothest thing uh, for a prize task. Uh, and the winner of the show got to wax my chest. Uh, and that was the only time David Baddiel won an episode. Um, and <laughs> no. so David waxed my chest at the end. Oh. Luckily, I don't have a lot of hair there. So it wasn't as impressive as, as what Johnny did. Um, I feel like Johnny should have won. But then also, I really, again, this is when Mawan was rewarded for yes. thinking outside of the box. Yeah, and for quite a similar thinking outside the box to the first. Greg is inconsistent this series. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm after him. Or maybe he felt bad about the prize task and was trying to address the balance in this one. I I, th- I really enjoyed the words, and I like it was quite poignant as well that he thinks something out of character for him is being assertive in a work yeah. situation. Yeah, which was good. I thought, I thought that was really well done and uh, a good thing to spend the money on because uh, you know you want to in the studio you want to have something to show for it okay well just i'd like to say uh no greg uh (laughs) yes i I am a valuable member of this team (laughs) i'm assertive i'm creative i'm powerful i'm beautiful i'm a sexy badass bitch i added that last bit (laughs) Um, richard got four points for the tarot card reading how do we feel about that do you think yeah pretty good i think that's fair enough i think that if he's never done anything like that ever in his life, mm-hmm. then spending the twenty pounds on on having a tarot card reading is fair enough. I would say though, actually, no. Here's where I drill down into it. Yeah. Have the tarot card reading. Fine, that's out of character. But I think in order to be true, that you've got to be out of character while you're doing it as well. Right. And go for it. Yeah. He was being very superior about the whole thing, right? Yes. That's not out of character, is it? For Richard no, Hammond? it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but here's where I think Richard should not have got four points for that. And it's not necessarily his fault. Sometimes with Richard throughout his career, quite often what he chooses to do for his shows and his comedy is deliberately do out of character stuff mm-hmm. for humour. Yes. So... He grew a Hitler moustache for a show. Yeah. Very out of character, but he did it to investigate doing something out of character. I think doing a tarot card reading or following astrology is exactly the sort of thing Richard Herring would Mm. do for laughs. Yes, that is a good point. So he's kind of checkmated himself with his life and how he lives his life anyway. Because everything... In fact, the most out of character thing that Richard Herring could do would be to do something completely within character. Yeah. So mm. bad luck, Richard. I'm taking all those points away. I think, I think you're absolutely right there. And I would say as well, that from the other angle, him laughing in the tarot card reader's face at the end <laughs> is too much in too character. Too much in character. <laughs> and now it's time for our regular feature, a little fact from your new BFF, Alex Horn. Yo, it's little Alex Horn here, your new BFF bonus fact finder. And today I'm your new BFF bonus fact finder because I'm going to tell you a little thing about each of the contestants and the out of character £20 task where the contestants had to do something out of character using £20. You may have seen Johnny Vegas whispering in my ear his initial plan, but you didn't find out what that plan was. Well, now you're going to find out. So well done for listening to the podcast. We did see Daisy say that normal Daisy would vape and ghost hunt with £20. Richard said that normal Richard would spend £20 on gambling and sweets. That's your little bonus fact about Richard. Catherine said, of course, drugs and poopers. (laughs) Her daughter, according to Catherine, would have said that Catherine would never give the money to charity, so that was an option and not a good reflection on the mother. Mawan said that normal Mawan would spend the £20 in Poundland on 20 things, whereas out of character Mawan, his initial instinct would be to rip it up. He would never normally rip it up because he's stingy. That's what Mawan said about Mawan. 
Whereas Johnny, here we go, his initial instinct, out of character behaviour for Johnny Vegas and a £20 note would be, I'm going to join a polo club. That's what he whispered in my ear. Quite aggressively, he was going to go to Richmond Polo Club with £20 and persuade them to let him join as a member. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. See you next week. Oh. So, we move onwards to, I think, the most visceral task that there's ever been on Taskmaster, uh, which is eat the most watermelon, but a team task. Obviously, watermelons mm-hmm. have a long history within the world of Taskmaster. You think of Ramesh Ranganathan mm-hmm. violently smashing a watermelon onto the floor and gobbling it down until he was sick. The moment that everyone realised this is a great show. Yes. I believe I mean, that is that's few. a widely held opinion that that is the moment that Taskmaster really kicked off, and it was I mean it was episode one, wasn't it? I think it was episode task one, one, task one. Yeah, but that moment, as soon as it hits the floor, everyone went, "This is a good show." Yeah, here we go. It's like a moment <laughs> in television, and I like that. Here we are. It's series ten. You know, it's a big achievement for any TV show. Series ten, and they do it a little tip of the cap. Yeah. To where it all started. Good on them. But, but not repeating it exactly. No. Which is key, I think, because I don't think they'll ever start doing that where they start resurrecting old tasks necessarily. This is a team task this time. They have to feed each other. Uh, and unfortunately, Daisy and Richard shot their version of the task before social distancing. Because there's some things that have been brilliant about covid and i never thought i'd say this but what is great about this pandemic is that people now can't feed each other watermelon close up yeah unless they're from the same household unless they're from the same household (laughs) just awful and the way they edited it it, it's going to live with me for the rest of my life and poor daisy when they said we've got to feed each other the first team task they did when richard walked into the room daisy backed away from him because she was so scared of him right and then then to be told on the same day because they film all the team tasks on the same day yeah. to be told you've got to feed each other watermelon she looked horrified <laughs> she was smiling but her eyes were saying get me out of here right now <laughs> oh yeah she got she, she went hysterical at one point just started laughing uncontrollably because it was just like what is my life what is going on why isn't this man eating any watermelon yeah he was i mean she said herself that he was just staring at her for large portions of it eating the watermelon i mean it was it was a particularly gobsmacking psych she just went for it as you should do in taskmaster but she was i mean she was chowing down on that thing it was so funny i mean i laughed so much oh i couldn't (laughs) stop laughing at it um i'll definitely re-watch it yeah it was it was amazing, like slow motion, just right. <laughs> At one point, she's eating a, a bit of watermelon and it snaps. Yeah, the kind of the the skin bit snaps and it all falls on the floor. And there's a moment where Richard gets a handful of watermelon and holds it up in front of her, and she looks at it for like a split second and then dives her face into it straight away. <laughs> and she's, just, she's just like, yeah, well, I've just got to keep doing this. Rather I mean, astute from really... Richard that it was it was like The Walking Dead. And once he'd said that, you can't get that out of your head, that it's, it's the sort of thing yeah. in The Walking Dead, they'd walk into a room and see, like in a school gym or something, and see <laughs> yeah. two zombies absolutely feasting on a head. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. Because the crack of a watermelon, very similar. I think they use watermelons... As sound effects for like skulls being smashed in in like TV right, yes. and radio stuff, so that's all it felt like. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very graphic, very visceral. I, I th- and I also think Daisy and Richard, and we'll come to the others shortly because they did an amazing job too. Yeah, Daisy and Richard eating watermelon out of each other's hands, and at one point Richard says, "Don't spit onto the bit I've got to eat." <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it will be held up as an example as to what society was like before the pandemic. <laughs> like, going, of course we got a pandemic and we all caught a disease off each other. Look at what we were doing. Careful not to spit on my bit of watermelon that I've got to eat for a TV yeah. show. That we just broke open on a yeah. table that was not sanitised in any way, shape or form. <laughs> we scooped off of there. Don't spit on it, please. You could show that to people in 100 years and go, this is how it started, and they'd believe you. <laughs> yeah. Also, like, I remember when Ramesh did, the, did it and ate it all off of the floor. So Ramesh eats like virtually an entire watermelon off of the floor and then at the end has it stringing out of his mouth and he's going to be sick. Daisy 
took two mouthfuls and then was in that state immediately. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, so it was like immediately going to be sick. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it escalated a lot quicker. I mean, she was eating for two, to be fair. It yeah. Maybe should have had some points deducted for that. <laughs> that baby. That would have been a confusing day for the baby, yeah. all of a sudden. This hasn't been in my diet ever, and now it appears to be <laughs> the biggest quantity of anything I've ever eaten. So, Johnny Castro number one, they, they had a much ta- harder task on their hands. Yeah. Uh, because they had to social distance. Uh, so, they had to basically dangle bits of watermelon into their mm-hmm. mouths from sticks. Um, but still did a great job. Still, on occasion, made me feel sick, though. Well done them, that they could still do it. I wouldn't have done it the way they did it. I mean, you would have put it in a cannon and fired it at their heads. Well, yeah, I would have, actually. And it probably yeah. would have worked. Yeah, if the cannon was there anyway, if you'd got that yeah. earlier in the I would have said, can I have a whole melon instead, please? And yeah. not this sliced stuff. Yeah. And then just fired a whole melon at Johnny Vegas' head. Yeah, and then they would have had to have released a BBC News article with an obituary <laughs> for Johnny Vegas. Yeah. Uh, Catherine didn't eat much for a 22-stone woman. No, interesting that, isn't it? <laughs> no, that, that, that didn't get bought up again later on. Oh, an interesting Catherine. You didn't eat anything of that melon, 22 stone, apparently. Now, I think... A lot's going to be said about Daisy and Richard being uh, such a visceral and sick-making experience to watch. But Mm -hmm. I think it pales in comparison to Johnny Vegas eating some watermelon and then saying, I want daddy's watermelon. (laughs) I don't even remember that. He looked at Bawan and he said, I want daddy's watermelon, (laughs) which is the most horrific phrase of all time. Um, but I think, yeah, so Daisy and Richard, five points for eating a kilo. I mean, that, but the lion's share of that is Daisy, isn't it? Yeah, and also, I do think it's unfair when it's like they're doing se- different tasks, you know? Yeah. They're doing different ones, but I like watching it. I like watching them have to do something different. It's fine. I mean, yeah. I can only imagine if the other team had done it before social distancing, what that would have looked like. The three of them <laughs> in a triangle, just feeding the person to their right and having to eat it. <laughs> Oh, well, maybe they can get together for a reunion episode and try it again. Uh, So the studio task, which we'll talk about briefly, uh, it's the words. You've got to list as many words with a certain amount of letters and there's a letter added on each round. Again, it's one that panics you. Uh, A couple of things to talk about here. Obviously, Daisy, just because it was like they dropped in a 19th century docker to the game. Uh, (laughs) Calmly seeing a gap in the market for swear words and just yeah. going for it. Uh, genius. And it's essentially, yeah, genius and won the game by pluralising all the same words. <laughs> yeah. I looked so delighted when she won. I love Daisy's face when she wins. Yeah. Absolutely ecstatic. Looks like, looks like it's about to split in two. She's so happy. <laughs> just, I, I just don't think, yeah, she wasn't expecting to win the word-based one. Yeah. But she did what she was good at. She went for the swear words and she absolutely nailed it. And the blank face she had while she was reeling them off. She didn't she wasn't finding it funny. She wasn't finding it amusing. She wasn't proud of herself. Yeah. She was just like a robot, like a big swear robot. Yeah. It's like let's just get this done. Yeah. I'm gonna win this. I'm not gonna go for all these fancy words like the rest of them. Brilliant. Yeah, I it loved was brilliant. it. Brilliant. And equally brilliant because Richard Herring really thought he was gonna win that whole thing. Because Richard Herring's face. He's very well educated. He was devastated, wasn't he? I love a genuinely gutted face on Taskmaster. <laughs> where you can see that the person is, is, is really caught up in the competition of it all and wants to do well. I love it. Because when it, when it was declared that Moan and Richard were out in the same round, Moan did a funny, like, oh, appalled face. Like, oh, no, like that. Yeah. And Richard's like, like oh, no. It's Christmas Day and you're taking the board game a bit too seriously. (laughs) Wank, fuck, shit, buns, tits, cock, task, mask. (laughs) So at the end of the episode, we have Johnny in last place on 15 points, then Mawan on 17 points, Catherine on 20 points, Daisy on 24 points and the winner of another episode. It's not his first episode. He's won 26 points. It's Richard Herring, uh, which makes the series points very interesting. Uh, Mawan and Catherine sort of hovering around the bottom, but very close to each other, 67 and 68. Uh, that's 67 to Catherine, 68 to Mawan. Uh, then Johnny, 74 points. Then a little bit of a leap up. Richard Herring, 85, but Daisy's still in the lead. 
with 91 points. Very interesting. Now, you've seen every episode so far, James. Do you have any predictions? Well, it's difficult. Um, I'd love it if Daisy won. I think uh, I think she's a great, great competitor, a real credit to the game. <laughs> Mawan, I think that if he doesn't finish in the top three, I'm going to be annoyed. Yeah, I think he's being it's unfair what's happening to him at the minute. He's got some real highs, but his lows are very low. So it's a, oh, he's no. a very entertaining player for sure. He needs, I think Daisy's lows you... are very low, and she's still managed to be number one. Uh, yeah, but her lows Richard's are the prize lows task. Are very low. Uh, I don't know. I think they're more consistent. As we, as you well know, consistency is what wins Taskmaster. Yeah. I was consistent. No, we had ups and downs, as we, as we talked about at the beginning. Emotionally. Yeah, <laughs> because your tasks were ups and downs. Recently, the Taskmaster a YouTube channel um, put out the very first task on my series. Yeah. Like, full task. I watched it even though I was there. And and Greg gives us all our points. And Kerry wins the task. Jess is second. Rod's third. I'm second from bottom. And Phil is bottom. First task. And that's where we all ended up at the end of the series. Interesting. Your prediction is that the series will end up with the exact rankings of the first task of the series. That's a very, very yes. interesting theory. And I'm thinking about my series... And I think I won the first task proper. There we go. Of the I series, think... which was hide the aubergine. Very good. And you did, you hid that aubergine real well. I hid and I well. think Greg Davis makes his mind up about people on day one, and he doesn't change it. And that <laughs> is what the whole series revolves around, baby. So you watch. <laughs> Uh, we have some emails, James. A lot of people got in contact. They had some questions for you about your series of Taskmaster. James, you famously had some interpersonal difficulties with your teammate, one in particular. But who would be in your ideal Taskmaster team? Would you prefer a team of two or three? And who would be in your nightmare team? That's from Troy. Uh, so I think from I think we'll we'll say it's from past Taskmaster contestants. Who would be in your dream team? Who would be in your nightmare team? Well, I think. When I know that when I was there, get there for to team task day, I wanted to be on the group of two. I wanted to be in the team of two. Yes. So I think I'd want to be in the team of two. I think that would be easier. And uh, thinking about all the past Taskmaster contestants, the person that I'd probably be thinking on the level with is the champion of champions, Nish Kumar. I mean, see, that's your dream team. It, not yes. your dream team, I'm hoping, in terms of getting points. Yes, and get, and yes, getting points. We would win. It would be the biggest disaster in Taskmaster history if you and Nish were on a team together. You don't. I've well, seen you two together. You can't get anything practical done in the pub. That's not true. Look, once, like, Here's what would happen, and you know this is true. Hmm? You'd mess something up, and Nish would scream laugh until he was dead. Okay, so I... Correct. I, I presume you're basing this on everything. The fact that we had to do the door at Josh Widdicombe's wedding and instantly I put my hand in a cactus. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> that is one in a litany of examples, James. Mm, okay. Well, maybe it would be difficult, but I think, I think we would be thinking on the same page and that's what you need. Look, you'd have a laugh. I think you'd have a laugh. I don't think yeah. you think on the same page. What you do is shut the book and throw it in the toilet. Um, Sometimes that's the way to win a task. Right? You'd have a nice time, yes. but you would be an awful team. Tell mm. me, James, who would be on your nightmare team? Rod. Well, yes, so you've already been on your nightmare team. I think team, my nightmare would have been turning up and it was just me and Rod. I mean, thank God <laughs> Phil was there, to be honest. Like, <laughs> Phil was at least there to be the middle man and, to, you know, uh, he's a very chill presence. Yeah. Um, he's a bit more laid back and stuff. So, like, at least Phil was there. If if I if 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 the three person team had been Jess, Phil, and Kerry, and then me and Rod had just been the two of us, and I I had no way. <laughs> Do you think you would have physically come to blows? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, he's just lucky that on the day I didn't know there was stuff in the garage when he yeah. opened that garage. I mean, 
it was bad enough what I thought had happened, which was just him for no reason going off and doing a worse version of what we were doing on his own and meaning that we didn't do anything. That was bad enough. But that was one of my favourite moments of your series. Not the rant afterwards. That was very good, obviously. A lot of people talk about that. But it was um, when Phil gets tempted over to Rod's side, when he literally, <laughs> Phil just, t- like, he just wanders over like Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yeah, he goes, he goes over to reprimand Oh, uh, hey, Rod what's going on here, And be like, you shouldn't be doing this, Rod. And then Rod's like, can you pick that up? He's like, yeah, just this bit. And then when I come round and say what, it gets drowned out a little bit. You can't really hear it. But I say, what's going on? And Phil goes, they're very charming, the Irish. And that's his, <laughs> <laughs> that's his reasoning. <laughs> Hello, James. My question is, can we get a full rendition of Pants on a Stick on Spotify? That's from Emerson. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you know, if you work... Em- Emerson, if you work for a record label, let's talk. We could you drop know. Pants on I'd a love, Stick. I'd love to have it on Spotify. Are there, more, are there more verses and choruses that we didn't hear on the show? Do you think you could... Do you think now you could give us a little longer rendition? You know, like on in the Fresh mm. Prince theme tune where... There's a secret verse that you can only hear on the pilot. Is there? Is yeah. there more? Pants on a stick. Pants on a stick, waving from side to side. Pants on a stick. Whose pants? My pants. Your pants? No, no. They're my pants on a stick. They're so clean. I put them in my washing machine. On pants setting, and they came out and I dried those pants. I dried them on a stick, and I waved them around until they could fit on my dick. <laughs> Thank you, James. That was wonderful. And also, well done on resisting the dick rhyme until right at the end. Thank you very much. I'm surprised I didn't think of it when I actually did the show. Dear James, how much do you regret the circle task from Jacqueline in the US? And could you also uh, give us a little summary uh, as to what the circle task was? Well, like, there's a lot of moments where you don't remember doing the task. And um, I, I don't remember doing it. I definitely don't remember misinterpreting it. I didn't think I'd misinterpreted it at the time, but it was a sweep the biggest circle in one motion, biggest. Just circle make the biggest, wins. draw the biggest circle or make the biggest circle, right? Yeah, and you had to yeah. do it in one sweep. And um, I mean, I watched it back and I kind of I read the task out. Yeah. So I definitely know what it is. And then I stand up and I say, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I'll say, you coming outside and I must have on the way from the living room to the outside just forgotten what the task was because I then I definitely didn't do it I know I didn't do it on purpose for a laugh I didn't deliberately go ha ha this isn't really it I definitely thought that cycling in a big circle on a bicycle while spinning a hula hoop around my neck and this was pre hula hoop task. Yeah. I didn't even know I had that coming. Down Maybe that's what gave Alex the inspiration. <laughs> yeah, he was like this guy. He's the, he's the guy for the hoop task. <laughs> and I, for some reason, thought that was that would count, and that would be me sweeping a circle. I guess because I'm like, I'm going in a circle on the bike, and <laughs> I guess all I'd thought was I'll do a circle in the, a, a big circle on my bike, and um, when I went to get the bike, I'd seen a hula hoop, and I thought, well, I'll just incorporate that into it while do an doing extra the, circle the why not thing. yeah i definitely don't regret it i um i feel that there's probably still an argument to be made for it it was uh early days i think it was almost the second episode i didn't yet feel that confident arguing against greg davis especially when he gave me his teacher like stare and he looked angry <laughs> but uh i would still argue that if they had done a drone shot of that task then they would have seen how big the circle that i cycled in was and they yeah. could have uh they could have counted that, but they didn't. Well, that's even the bother. thing. That's the thing. They don't bother doing the drone shot. They don't bother, and, they, and they that's not bother. my fault. <laughs> and everyone else had done circles that you know. When you finish doing the circle, you can still see it. I think that yeah. was probably a, draw. A I think it was draw the biggest circle. So I think draw does. Yeah, it worked maybe. against me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It worked. The wording, the wording of the task. No, 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 no. The, the wording of the task didn't work against you. You worked against the wording of the task. Ah. Uh, well, again, you're using language there to make me sound like I'm wrong. <laughs> Correct. You, you thought, I've been told I should draw the biggest circle, yes. but what I'm going to do is ride around aimlessly on a bike <laughs> whilst badly spinning a hula hoop, and then I'm going to crash, accidentally notice there's another circle <laughs> before, and try and claim that as part of my attempt. That's my reading of what I saw. Have you got anything different to add? My eyes are circles. <laughs> 
James, thank you so much for coming on the Taskmaster podcast. Would you rate your experience on the Taskmaster podcast uh, from one to five points, please? Oh, always five points. Always five when it comes to Taskmaster. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoying this series. Oh, Ed, did you spot my cameo in this series, by the way? Uh, I didn't, no. Mm. My, me and my entire cast have made a cameo in this series. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, well, yeah, we're not talking about you as a human uh, being. Yes. Uh, we're talking about the knitted versions of you. Yes, in the birdcage. And that's what Johnny put in the bag to tempt the security guard. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you're all knitted in the birdcage. I, very fond it memories won the of task. that. It did win the task. And so it's there normally. You go. That, oh, that's your point proved, I suppose, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> it normally hangs in the caravan. That, I have very fond memories of it. Um, <laughs> James, thank you very much. Uh, you've been a wonderful guest on the Taskmaster podcast. Uh, and yes, I'll say you've won this series just to give you a little boost. Thank you, Ed. Let me read your menu back to you, see how you feel about it. <laughs> well, there we are. That was episode five of the Taskmaster podcast. Uh, lots of interesting chat. Nice to hear that James has some conspiracy theories about the editing. He is our first Taskmaster truther that we've had on the show. Uh, but uh, I think there was a lot of stuff in there to enjoy, including the full version of Pants on a Stick. I think it's going to break the internet. Um, thank you very much for listening. We will, of course, be back next week uh, with another special guest. If you want to get your questions in for me and our special guest, you can email taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com. That's how you get your questions to us. Uh, so some brilliant questions for James there. Couldn't get through all of them. Uh, maybe we'll have James back on uh, in the future at some point. You never know. Who knows what we're going to do with this podcast. Next week's guest, I'm very happy to say, it's another Season 7 alumni. It's Jess Nappett. Jess Nappett is coming on the show. Cannot wait to chat to Jess about her series, this series, and of course, her very famous fall from the runway in the Taskmaster studio. It is one of the clips of television that I have watched most in my life. Uh, I love a bit of slapstick, possibly rivaled now by Johnny falling off the ladder, but in terms of Taskmaster Hall of Fame falls, it's right up there, so we'll be talking to her about that. Of course, uh, if you can't get enough Taskmaster content in your life, go on the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Taskmaster. There's some excellent outtakes going up there, including one about a fart that went up recently. And if you're buying Christmas presents, as you should be now, get them in early, taskmasterstore.com. There's lots of lovely Taskmaster goodies up there. But thank you very much for listening. We'll see you again next week with a wonderful special guest, Jess Nappett. Email taskmasterpodcast at gmail.com with your questions, and we'll see you then. Goodbye. Over my shoulder. Older and older. That's what I told you. Over my shoulder. I'm getting colder. Is that a boulder? For more Taskmaster, subscribe now. <laughs>